ago, we realized, I realized that my kids were old enough to understand one of my favorite movies and to understand why the jokes were funny. And so we got to watch The Princess Bride. You know, you have to understand the genre before you can understand parody. And so this was, it was great. They actually got the jokes. And now we can all go around in a bad Spanish accent saying, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. My accent's not great, but I love that line. If you've not seen the movie, this is a character who has a single-minded pursuit of justice. Now, his definition of justice is revenge, and we're going to set that aside because that's probably not a good one. But he has this, this way of saying this mantra over and over again as he is moving through these difficult things in his life, as he is trying to overcome ridiculous things, because this is a comedy. He says, my name is Inigo Montoya. My name is Inigo Montoya, over and over again. This is who I am. Names matter, don't they? I think of my grandmother on my uh, mother's side who, whose family came over from Germany. She was the only one born in the United States, and her parents gave her a good German name. In German, it's pronounced Bertha, and in English, it's Bertha. And she was not going to be Bertha. From as long as she was old enough to have an opinion, she was Betty. And that's all there was to it. Her name was Betty. She would not respond to Bertha. No one would call her Bertha. On legal documents, her name, legally Bertha, nope, sign in Betty. Refused to acknowledge that name. Because it was associated with, I don't know, sounds like a fat cow, she said. It was associated with having those parents the only ones on the public bus with a live chicken, the ones who spoke in an accent at parent-teacher conferences and needed their daughter to help them trans, you know, no. Betty, call me Betty. Her middle name, though, uh, was Natalie, and she loved that because her sister had given it to her. I don't know about my great-grandparents and their trust in letting their, their oldest child help name the youngest one, but she did pretty well. Natalie. Natalie. And so my grandmother always liked that name because it came from her sister. Now, there's a story in my husband's family that if his sister had had, had her way in the naming, his name would have been Treehouse. But uh, <laughs> his, his parents were wise, and, and apparently my great-great-aunt was, was a little bit uh, more thoughtful. But names matter, right? They tell you something about relationships and connections. I have an aunt, a great-aunt, whose name is Roseanne, but I never knew it. Everyone calls her Dutchie. And I can remember as sort of an eight or nine-year-old family would say something in passing about Aunt Roseanne. And I was like, I have an aunt I don't know. Who is this person? And it took me a number of years to figure out that Aunt Roseanne was Aunt Dutchie. She is the youngest of seven children and apparently um, was the duchess of the household. From a very early age, she just called the shots and had all her siblings and her parents wrapped around her little finger. And so she has been the duchess her entire life. And now at 82-ish, she's still the duchess. You know, that is who she is. And it says something about her relationship with her parents and her siblings and even, you know, her, her sons-in-law call her duchy. Even her grandson calls her duchy now that I think about it. So there's something about that relationship, right? Names tell us something. I have a, a brother who is eight years younger than I am, and so when I was in high school, he was sort of preschool, early elementary age, and um, would come in the afternoons after school looking for, you know, he's bored, looking for someone to entertain him. My mother was teaching piano, and I'd either be doing my homework or dodging my homework reading a book. And he'd come in and he'd say, you know, do you want to build Legos? Do you want it this, that, or the other thing? Oh, I'm busy right now, kiddo. And so we're not entirely sure in our household if it was that he couldn't pronounce sissy or if it was because I answered just a few too many times, I'm busy right now, kiddo, but he called me busy for a number of years. And I, it was sort of nice to have this nickname that your brother called you and also kind of made you feel guilty. Names have this way of connecting us to people. So I would like for you to think... For yourself, what is a name that you would claim? And it might be a nickname. It might be um, your vocation, 
you know, a teacher, an artist, or um, might be the name, your given name. Maybe there's a story. These are the empty boxes. We're going to get nowhere with that. The full boxes are in a bag under a chair way over here. So a name that was given to you, maybe you're named after somebody, and that's important. Think of a name that you're glad to identify with. People give us names that we don't want. Oh, you have a sister named Roseanne. Perfect. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Ash, going on here. But what happens in this story with Jesus is that he is named, right? God says from the sky in some sort of, I, I imagine in the voice of Maggie Smith, but your voice might be Charlton Heston or um, something else. This is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. Jesus is given his identity. He had it before, but it's named explicitly now because just next, Jesus is going to be out in the wilderness. He's going to be out being tempted. He's going to be out where, where Satan is going to try to tell him who he is. And Jesus needs to know for himself who he is. So once you have written that lovely name, whatever it might be, on your name tag. Asher, don't sit. Sorry, bud. <laughs> Here we go. Yep, and I'm going to draft Conley, too. That's joys of being a pastor's kid. Would you help, too? Oh, you have some of the words that come and give us our identity. Just as Jesus was given his identity in baptism, we are claimed and named in baptism. When that water comes to us, we are marked in a way that says, this is who you are. We say no to all sorts of other things, right? We ask people to reject sin and all of the things that pull us away from God so that we can say yes to this new identity that God is giving us. So there are a bunch of words here that are part of our baptismal liturgy and our words around what it means to be baptized. You might have other words that you understand is your identity as someone who follows Jesus. So find one of those that speaks to you. Um, when I did it earlier, I picked marked with the cross of Christ forever. I have never gotten a tattoo, but this idea that there is something indelible that I cannot wash off, scrub off, run away from, that will always tie me to the promises of Jesus' cross is really powerful. So there might be something that speaks to you. So you can write that underneath on your name tag. Uh, I promised myself at the first service I would remind you not to stick them on yet. So pull it off, scribble it on there the best you can, and then stick it back on again with this name that you have been called in baptism. When we are baptized, we're joined with Christ, and what is his becomes ours. So that voice that says, this is my child, this is my beloved, this is the person in whom I take delight, God is speaking to us. So take a moment, and once you've got that scribbled down, if I haven't made you feel uncomfortable enough yet, I'm going to ask you to turn and find someone that you did not come to worship with and who isn't sitting. If you, if you are one of those people that sits in the same pew and you're the same people sit next to you every week, also not them. So you might have to turn around behind you. You don't have to you know, walk to the other side of the sanctuary, but find someone who you maybe don't know super well. Tell them your real name, because that's not on your paper. Share the story of whatever name you did write. Mine said busy at the early service, this story of my brother. And then share which of these names that God has called us in baptism spoke to you and why you put that on your name tag. So we're going to take about two and a half minutes to do that. Go. Let's return back. So in baptism, we are given our primary identity. God speaks and names Jesus as his son, the beloved, and that is who he is. He is going to need that as he goes out into the desert. He is going to need that every step of his way to the cross. And we're not any different than that, right? We need this identity that we have been given in Jesus Christ. When we go into January 2017, whatever that is bringing in your life, 
My niece was baptized last weekend in a Mission Start church that my brother is the, the worship director of where they meet in a barn that is also a burger joint and a bar. And so there was this barrel, this is in Texas, this barrel and a little tiny bowl of water. There's a Bud Light sign with the Texas flag that's off, but you know, it's there in the pictures. This sense that in the middle of life, this little tiny, she's tiny, about that big, little tiny child is being named a child of God. And she's going to need that identity every step of her life. And so my brother and, his, and sister-in-law were keen to get her right there to those waters of baptism so that she could have that, so that she can go around like I sometimes do and I hope that you do, not saying my name is Inigo Montoy, but... I know who I am. I am a child of God. And so when the world tries to tell me otherwise, I know my primary identity. When my own sinful nature tries to tell me that I am all that matters, my identity in baptism says I am a part of the family of faith. That's a completely different thing. I have been claimed to live a completely different sort of a life. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of Christ. We thank you for the ways that he came into the middle of this world that we live in, in flesh and blood and in all of the complexity with wildernesses and crosses and death. We thank you, Lord God, that he brought your new life through that incarnation and death and resurrection so that we might all receive what is his. We thank you for calling us your beloved children. We pray that you would fill us with confidence in that identity so that as we are sent out into your world, we can be signs of your love and mercy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.